What's up everybody and welcome back to the Slayer's Den. Thank you guys again so much for joining me. Today we are playing a stupid janky mutate deck called Wild Mutations. Yeehaw! <laughs> so um, so yeah, aside from the really cool name, um, the main game plan is basically to stick a Ruin Crab, which has a landfall ability. It says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills three cards. You mix that with a Shia Soul of the Wild, which has an ability that says non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. So every creature and every land that you play or cheat out with Auspicious Starix triggers Ruin Crab. And if you have a stack of Ruin Crabs that are being cheated out with Auspicious Starix as well, you're basically just going to mill the hell out of your opponent really, really quickly, and it is so crazy. Now, for some reason, our Ruin Crabs get disposed of or we don't draw them. We do have the backup Skute Swarm slash Mutation plan, where we play a Mutate creature onto Skute Swarm, and then they can just create multiple copies of that mutated Skute Swarm, and that can get out of hand super fast, as you guys probably know. But overall, this deck seems like a total blast, and I am super hyped to play this one for you guys. Thank you guys again so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and hanging out the Slayer's Den. I really appreciate it. And if you guys enjoy the vid, please remember to destroy the like and subscribe buttons below. It's not just a great way to support my channel. It allows the YouTube algorithm to share this video and the rest of my videos with even more MTG fans out there. And that means the world to me. So thank you guys again so much. And without further ado, let's play some Magic the Gathering. Scoochie, scoochie. Okie dokie. Um, so this is an interesting start. I guess we keep it just because if we can stick the crabs, this is going to be a hell of a ride for the opponent. There's they don't they don't have a way to really interact with it, so Let's see what the opponent's got. Okay, maybe a burn spell here. Gonna play Rune Crab and Lots of landfall going on here. Go next. No attacks. And the turn. So they are on just straight up landfall. Well, let's see if we can get them before they get us, right? Valakut exploration. Sure. Let's go and grab a island. Mutate landfall to Ooh, Ugin. Yikes. Alright, so. Gonna play a forest. Get rid of some cobras, some mutate creatures, and I think we're gonna play the polywog symbiote and a gilded goose. No attacks. And the turn. Let's see what the opponent's got going on. Okay, we got rid of a bone crusher and an ugin and a brush fire elemental. Got a roiling regrowth too. Okay. Interesting. So the removal is Bone Crusher. And that's all I can foresee at this moment. Roiling regrowth. Okay. So they're just going for the gold, ramping up turbo style. Meanwhile, we gotta just punish them as much as we can. They're gonna lose Beanstalk and Roiling Regrowth to Exile. Okay. Take two. Sure, 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 sure. Um, let's play a forest. Mill the opponent for a little bit more. And <clears throat> I guess we'll play Tangled Florahedron as well. Give some extra ramp. And we'll do mm, no attacks. End the turn. So at least this way we'll have blockers for a little bit. I'd love to see one of my auspicious Starix already, but they had Skute Swarm as part of their game plan. This is a huge deck, by the way. This is like an 80 card deck. Uh, let me see. Nissa. Okay. Azure, Azure, Azure. Okay. Alright. Putting on taps of land. Get a 3-3 three, three up in here. Okay. Um, so they could have a Bone Crusher in hand, so we'll probably just let this all go through. Okay. 
Go and create a food. It's going to play Parcel Beast mutated onto our crab. This card an island. Temple of Mastery. Um, Great Horn could be okay here. So we could pay the one, put this in our hand, that'll leave us with one, two, three mana to actually Great Horn here. Do we do that? I think we do. Let's go ahead and Great Horn here. Go and mutate the other Ruin Crab. Scarden Island. Give us some extra land. Grab a forest. <laughs> They're down to 47 cards in their library. This is insane. I've never seen an 80 card um, landfall deck before. Never once have I. This is very interesting. I'm thinking it's probably important that we block here. So we may just drop the goose and the polywog symbiote just so that we do have blockers. We won't be able to block the brushfire elemental. Let's see what Scucci has for us. Stone coil serpent, sure. Okay. Do one damage to us. So let's go ahead and Starix onto the migratory. Oh shit. Okay. We could go into overtime by playing a Ruin Crab here. Um, I think we gotta ditch the Ruin Crab though, unfortunately. Grab a forest. Okay, put it out to 27 lands here. So let's go ahead and migratory onto the Starix. See if we can just mill them out right now. Put an island down. We might be able to mill their 80 card deck. That would be really sick. <laughs> oh my god, are we going to do it? I think we're going to mill an 80 card deck out. <laughs> oh my god. This is so stupid. Okay. And we'll do um, no attacks. End the turn. So we got blockers for days now. We have 8 cards left in their library. So what we could do is we could do a block parcel beast trigger if we needed to. Really depends on what the opponent pulls out here. <clears throat> Ancient Green Warden. Okay, so you can play lands from the battlefield. That's fine. I'm okay with blocking a Coombe Hellhound here. We've also got a blocker for Brushfire. We have six cards left in their deck. So I think we mill them out here with the amount of blockers we have. We just basically have to block with everything but our crabs. Epitaph Golem, sure. Don't think that will save them from the ultimate mill plan here, but we gotta do what we gotta do. We have a virtual um, 14 HP here as well. Pass the blockers. We'll go block here. Block here. Block here. Block here. And I'm cool with that. Okay, let's see what the opponent's got going on. Okay, <laughs> put some cards from their library into their graveyard, sure. Still want to hold up the mana, so that way I have a virtual 14, just in case they have some craziness that can happen. Okay. They have four cards left in their library.
Okay, let's go ahead and... Done. My turn. Go mutate onto Starix. Go lead the Stampede. The land in. Land. <laughs> oh my god. Like it's so crazy. No attacks. End the turn. <laughs> I milled an 84 card deck, I guess. Wow. What? This had like 100 cards in it. Holy shit. The opponent's like, how did this happen? <laughs> That's why I put 100 cards in this deck. So I wouldn't get milled. Oh my god. Oh no. And they're going to rope me. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so hilarious. How many cards is that? 84 in the graveyard. One in hand. This is 85. God, that is like 100 cards or something. I thought it was 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, that's like 100 cards. Wow. I've never seen a 100 card landfall, gruel, or whatever this is. I guess it's like Jund or something. Because see, what they can do is they can Epitaph Golem. And if they do that, then in response, I can Parcel Beast here. So it's not quite over yet. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that gives them 8. Okay. They still have to swing in. Okay, so they play Terror, sure. So they have to cast something here. So what I can do basically is bounce Epitaph Golem with Pouncing Shark. They have to go in for a big swing here. Um, I have a virtual 13 life here, which will be fine. Okay, so they play another land. I can also tap Goose, create a food, and that will still give me 9 life, so I'll be at 16. Okay, um, let's go ahead and activate this. My turn. Let's go and mutate Pouncing Shore Shark here. And all I have to do is bounce the Golem. Drop the Goose. Drop a Forest. Put it over. They'll get to put a land back on top. They put a bot or they can put a card back on, but then obviously all I have to do is just um just play something, mutate onto Starx or something. Drop the um, parcel beast. Put a land down. And that should do it, hopefully. <laughs> and the turn. <laughs> yes. Holy. I was actually, I was having a little heart attack there. I was like, oh wait, that card. I forgot that fucking Epitaph Golem was out there, but holy smokes. Wow. That was one of the craziest matches I've had in a really long time. I milled a hundred card deck. <laughs> And it actually didn't even take that long. It was probably like less than 10 turns. So GG. Kyo tu hermana. Kyo tu hermana. We're gonna keep it. Keep it because we got the crabs. We got crabs. Yeah, it's Plain Island and good old Ruin Crab friend here. We can get things going on curve. Very powerful. Okay. Play forest. Parcel Beast here. We'll swing in. Can play the forest and migratory over this as well. So they got their mutate going on. Okay, let's see what they got here. They got Two Migratories in the yard and a Skewed Swarm. And yeah, I'll attack. Might have been wiser to play Gilded Goose just so I could get the Auspicious Starx out in a timely manner, but 
it may not be that big of a deal. So the opponent probably has stern dismissal in hand. If I had to guess. Play an island. Mill the opponent for three. You love to see it. Go and play Migratory. See if we can get that to bounce. Cool with them bouncing it already, because that's the whole stack we get. Alright, so what is this? Let's go ahead and activate the ability. Play Gilded Goose. That's two stern dismissals. And that's probably their removal in the deck. So if we can get ahead of them, we've got a good chance here. Okay, Bunna ramps up for a bit more. Sweet. Alright, so first things first, let's play Rune Crab here. And Guess let's go ahead and Auspicious Star X. We could get another bounce. Stern Dismissal, sure. But that does mean everything moving forward gives us a greater chance to mill the opponent down some. So we basically have to get 10 lands down at this point. Opponent Gem Razors E Auspicious Star X's. Get some goodies on the ground. Azure, 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 Azure. Okay, so what we are going to do is play a forest, mill the opponent for some, and let's go ahead and mutate onto the Auspicious Star X. Grab a forest, I think. Yeah, grab a forest. Let's go and do this one more time. Grab an island. Grab another island. next and no attacks and the turn so there are 12 lands or 12 cards in their library and we've got plenty of blockers okay, i'm gonna play this cute swarm sure <laughs> yes let's go oh man feels good feels good to destroy i guess kind of a mirror-ish deck but um i think our game plan was a little bit better i think the addition of ruin crab really fucks with them gg Mm, Twas an ungainly weasel I saw the other day. This gives us a decent chance to kind of get our game plan going on, so we'll keep it. Open up the block, Lonus. Okay. Alright, so let's play Island Ruin Crab. Might be able to double Ruin Crab here if the opponent uh, is okay with that. Okay, so they're on Golgari. Gross. So they like it. They're like, I'm into this shit. Mill me away. Mill me till I cannot be milled no more. Yeah, okay. Dead weight is a removal of choice here, so maybe Myers Grasp as well for one of the crabs. Okay. So we got Murderous Rider here. Shit, 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 shit. Let's go and play an island. Build the opponent some more. Let's go and mutate the Rune Crab. Grab a forest here. Some lands down. Death Bloom Thalid. Okay. And uh, yeah, sure. I'll swing for three. And I think we use this goose to. Play the other goose, so that way if we get a mutate creature and they get rid of like a goose and a great and a great horn, then we have something to mutate onto. 
Only time will tell, I suppose. Death Bloom Thalon. When this dies, creates Sapperlings. Okay, Order of Midnight lets them bring back shit, so definitely heavy on the recursion here. Turn a permanent from their graveyard to their hand. So we're actually helping them by milling. It's unfortunate. Uh, so what did they bring back? Twin Blade Assassins? Sure. Um, so let's go and play Tangle Veil. Mill some more. And I think we just go next and we do... Let me see. I think we swing in. Let's swing in. Grab a island. Draw a card. And end the turn. Sudden spinnerets. Twin blade assassins. Okay, let's see. Super interesting deck for sure. What kind of removal do they have in here? Murderous Rider seems to be the only one I've seen so far. Death Bloom Thalid, okay. Okie dokie. So they might have hold up two for double blockers. Uh, we're going to create a food. Let's go and play Label Passage. Mill them some more. Go and grab a green mana here. Yeah, I think we just go next. Yeah. Um, No attacks. End the turn. Let's see. A Rasta. A Rasta man. <laughs> okay. So what the opponent's got going? Twin Blade Assassins. The beginning of your end step of a creature died this turn. Draw a card. Okay. Well, that's gonna suck kind of, but uh it is what it is. You can bounce the Death Bloom Thalid, I think. Okay, my turn. C Dash Octopus is pretty nice here. So let's just fuck with that. Go forest. Let's see. They got 19 cards left. Let's see what they have milled so far. Drag to the underworld. All right, so they have drag to the underworlds here. Gross. Um, I think we go and play this as a land. And we'll just end. Do no attacks. End the turn. Yeah, back for more too. Really gross. I don't like that. It's a fight a creature. I don't like that as well. But we'll hold up the Pouncing Short Shark just in case they do have a back for more that targets our Migratory Great Horn, I guess. I don't know. But basically, they've got five land ball triggers to go before they are donezo, I think. So let's see. Let's see if we can outdo the self mill deck, the deck that wants stuff in their graveyard. Okay. So they return a creature. All right, so what do we do here? We will go and bounce this. Grab an island. Take action. Okay, we'll take the fort. My turn. Down to 12, get him down to 9 here. Go next. No attacks, end the turn. So they could Pelucranos and fight, which is probably what they'll do, but they have 8 cards left. They need to figure something out. They can't cast Tree Shaker without a land, so that's not that big of a deal. So what's the game plan here? They could Demonic Embrace on the Nightmare Shepherd, swing in, block with a goose. They could put the Demonic Embrace on another creature for big damage and really whittle me down, basically. So they bring back Pelucranos. So if I can get like an Auspicious Star X or something like that, that will definitely help and I'd love that, but uh, definitely no promises in this game, obviously. But I do need to draw into something significant here. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, still think we're gonna take it. I think we might block, we'll go to blockers. I'll block a Nightmare Shepherd. Create a food. Pass the damage. Take five. And it's um 
Getting really close and really scary. This is likely not enough to stop the opponent, but I think we have to go for it. Because if they don't kill us this turn, then there's a really great chance that it's probably done for. But what have we got rid of? We've got rid of all the dead weights, it looks like. Back for Moors are kind of in there as well. Alright, so opponent bites my Pouncing Shore Shark. That's gone. You have three mana open. So they could go Demonic Embrace onto Pelucranos. I've got at least six mana to gain me back nine life. Okay. Alright. So we will pass the blockers. Does this have Trample? No, it doesn't have Trample. Great food token. Let's go and gain some life here. Play this as a blocker. Go next, no attacks, and the turn. That way they can't fight with my Ashaya necessarily. Although we will need to use all our food, looks like. That'll get us up to 22, virtual 22 right here. Okay, on Gainly Weasel, let's see what you got going on. Okay, so what we'll do is we will... That's 15, so we'll go ahead and gain some life. Gain some more. down to one. Oof. Our last shot right here, guys. Can we do it? Can we mill them out? Twin blade assassins. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I guess this dies. If this dies, they get to draw a card. <clears throat> and then we just have to find a way to mill. Okay. Sure. Instead. Go ahead and gain some life. My turn. Good game. Good game. Oh man, really? It went down like that, huh? Robert B. Biker. You son of a bitch. Okay, we will keep. We'll keep because we do have the Polywog Symbiote, which uh, could possibly enable us to. Play the Migratory Great Horn and just start ultra ramping into Skute Swarms. <clears throat> Looks like they are on the Selesnia Yorion deck, which is really scary because they do have like sweepers and a lot of um, enchantment removal. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I think they have like glass caskets, Elspeth Conquers Deaths. They've got um, Wicked Wolves so that they can activate Trail of Crumbs. Um, we're going to play a forest. And we're going to go ahead and mutate Polywog Symbiote here. And I think we're going to discard the... I want to get to six so Skeet Swarm can pop off. So I might have to drop off Lead the Stampede here, but maybe not. We'll drop the island for now. We are ramping with Migratory, so it's not that huge of a deal, I suspect. Um, we will grab a forest, so we have an island in hand, and yeah, we'll go and swing in. Yep, opponent gains three, sacks their food, pays one to draw a card. Chill Crumbs is a great draw engine in this deck. I'm just down to a saucy 20. See if the opponent removes the Migratory Great Horn. Yorion, okay. So they play the Yorion to get some food. Makes sense. Okay, so we play the island. We'll go ahead and mutate onto Migratory Great Horn here. Discard the Temple of Mystery. Elspeth Conquers Death is probably incoming, but um, it is what it is. How much we can do about that? Let's grab a forest. 
Grab some more lands. Let's go and play this as well. We'll drop the Stampede, I guess. Grab an island. Grab another island. Go next. Mm, swing in for six. Okay, put in blocks with their bird. And we will end the turn. Okay, we'll take four here. So opponent might have a sweeper. But we've ramped up to so many lands that feels good, man, at this point. We could skeet swarm and then Dreamtail Heron, which is what I think we'll do. They might Elspeth my Auspicious Starix, which is uh, fair. Okay, so the Yorion instead. What's going on? All right, so we go my turn. Um, how do we kill the opponent this turn? Is it a possibility? I think we swing in first. And I think we just end the turn here, honestly. We got them down to eight. Sack the food. They don't have the mana to do anything, really. They could pay the five after swinging to cast another Yorion. I'm not sure what is in their hand, honestly. We haven't really milled them very effectively. Okay, so this is cool. Like this. Let's go and Shore Shark here. Don't drop the Florahedron. Bounce the ape. <clears throat> Grab an island. Grab a forest. Return Kogla. Get some turbo mill the opponent now. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, sick. So what we'd have done there was probably played. Um, you know, like Dream Tail Heron on the Skeet Swarm and then just make a ton of copies of that. Didn't look like they had a sweeper, so good for us, right? All right, folks, this looks like the perfect place to end today's videos. And damn, I had a ton of fun playing this one. Um, you know, Mutate is one of my favorite archetypes and I really enjoy playing it and just trying to find ways to make it busted. Um, as you've seen probably in the last, you know, handful of my videos, I, I love the Mutate mechanic. Rune Crab is just a great way to really utilize Mutate to its fullest potential because you can get so many lands out, mix that in with Ashaya Soul of the Wild and everything that you cheat out with Auspicious Starix is going to mill your opponent for a shit ton. So anyway, thank you guys again so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and hang out in the Slayer's Den with me. I really, really appreciate it. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please remember to destroy the like and subscribe buttons below. It's not just a great way to support my channel. It allows the YouTube algorithm to share this video and the rest of my videos with even more MTG fans out there. And that means a ton to me because I am trying to grow the Slayer's Den community. So thank you guys again so much and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to smash that like button below and to help you stay up to date with my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks again, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, Slayers.